Welcome to the Office 365 Jumpstart for Small Business Administration. I'm Steve Hall, and this is Chris Oakman. Welcome. To, now we're on Module 4, Administering Link Online. So we're going to jump right into the slide deck. We covered uh, the previous three slides were Office 365 Infrastructure, User Management, and the DirSync. Today we have Link Online, followed by SharePoint Online, then Exchange. Of course, we have a meal break in between. Yep. So what's, what is Link Online? Let's, let's get right into it. Link Online is the tool that allows us to better communicate with our coworkers, with our peers, with other users, and with anybody. Hosted communication service hosted by Microsoft as part of Office 365, that it gives us presence, it gives us instant messaging, it gives us audio and video, a rich online experience, and, and conference calling. One of some of the new features are that we can now connect with external users using Skype. Yeah, that's huge for, uh, that's one of the huge new features yep. for, for Link is the ability to, to federate with Skype, uh, Skype users yep. to connect with anybody that's on Skype. As well as obviously any Link enabled user, whether right. they be a Link on premise or a Link online user and more federation to come. Yep. So what are some of the service benefits? We can collaborate with our uh, coworkers or with external uh, contacts a lot better. We can reduce the cost of telephony and overall communications for small businesses. We can know when others are online. We can communicate from within any part of our overall uh, office experience, whether it be Outlook, SharePoint, Outlook web app, our uh, mobile phones. We can maintain that s uh, same line of communication from wherever we are. Going back to that overall, doing my job easier, better. How can I get it? Or how can we get it? Uh, Link Online is by default a part of all the uh, enterprise and medium-sized business uh, bundles of Office 365, and it can also come as a standalone uh, service. Great. What are the capabilities? Well, the enterprise instant messaging, the ability to do conferencing, the, the voice and dial tone, which is a uh, premium feature, and the ability to replace the PBX. Of course, that requires some on-premise uh, hardware still, but um, potentially some changes will be coming to that too. I'm gonna skip through some of these slides. Uh, it's just repetitive, but it drills down further into what exactly link the service is. But we have a handful of slides and we have some content and some, some online demos that we wanna to get to. Uh, the conferencing feature, you know, it allows us to uh, have a have a conference call on, the, on demand or scheduled with you know, as few as two people and as many as uh, 250 people. And that's every Link-enabled user can have a conference call at the same time. Right, and for, for us, conferencing uh, as part of Link has just taken over for us. We do, yeah. we do so much business every day using Link uh, to, to talk with our employees that aren't in the office, yeah. to talk with our clients. Uh, we use Link extensively uh, every day in our, in our organization. I mean, the fact that you, know, we, you can plug in to get that full enterprise voice, and when you really go full blown with Link, you get to bring in your plain telephone line or a PRI or a SIP trunk. It does require some advanced um, infrastructure, but you can use Link without that. You can talk, talk to Skype users. You don't need a thing to talk to users in Skype or other Link. And to have that ability to communicate more effectively, faster, better, um, is what we all want. We if, want to do things better and faster. Yeah, and from anywhere. Yep. yep. So back to the slides. and. You know, what does it take to get the actual telephony? I get asked a lot, you know, how do we make Link become our phone system? Um, we're, obviously, you, you, wanna, you may have an appliance on premise. It could be at a branch office, it could be at your main office. You have to have a, a physical server sitting somewhere that's running the Link server. All right. And it requires plan four. It does require the enterprise plan, and we'll, we'll get to that momentarily. Yep. So how can I use Link? What are the, what are the, what's new about Link? So the new Link uh, 2013 client, it's just a much cleaner interface, a lot easier to use, a lot easier to navigate. We can uh, much improve mobility clients. We have clients that support all the major uh, mobile platforms, mm -hmm. meaning the Windows mobile phone, meaning the Android phone, or Android uh, OS, yep. and the iOS, so the iPad and the iPhone. They have very, very, very good clients that are able to do full voice and video. And that's new with the latest version of, of Link. Um, 2013. So definitely, um, you know, you, there was a Link app, uh, the Link 2010 app, Link 2010 app, but that did not include video. So we now have video capabilities. Well, voice and video. Yeah, now we have voice yeah. and video capabilities with the new Link app. And, and that's really a game changer. One of the big things was, hey, well, you know, it's great that I can use IM, but I want to be able to, you know, stay connected wherever I am, whether I have my mobile phone or I'm on my my tablet device. Why should I be, you know? Why should I not have the same capabilities as those sitting at a PC such as this? 
Yep. You know, so now users from anywhere, any device can partake you know, in the rich media experience. Yep. So it's, it's quick and it's easy. So we can look at the actual screen I'll show. This is what the link client looks like. If you want to go find somebody, you simply type their, uh, sorry about that, let me get my laser pointer. You type in uh, their name here. They'll appear down in the actual context. You can add them as a contact. And if I just wanted to click on a user, I could start, double click on their name, and I could uh, select the uh, IM button right here, and I could start chatting with them down here. Or I could select the call, and it'll do a PC to PC call, assuming that we both have audio capabilities on our, on our devices. And remember, that person does not have to sit at a computer anymore. They can be on their mobile client, they can be on their phone, their, their Windows uh, 8 device, whatever device they're on. Um, finding the right person is simple now. All you do is type a name, and if they're not part of your organization, you need their entire link ID, which is their Office 365 login or their Skype uh, email address, or their Skype, 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 Skype associated email. email address. Right. Um, here we go, adding Skype users as a contact. And I'll actually do this in a moment. I just want to go through the uh, presentation in case some of you guys aren't catching that online. Um, it's just as easy. You're going to add a new client, or add a new, add a new user, Go down to uh, add a user outside of my organization and select Skype. Assume you've enabled that, and we'll show how to enable that as we go through the deck. On the flip side, if you're on uh, Skype, how do you add a link user? Same thing. You have to go in to uh, Skype and type the entire link ID, and it's going to show you, for example, this was Chris Oakman, and it shows that he's a link user, and down here we were actually IMing with each other. Simple as that. And this is what the Skype client looks like on Windows 8, the actual Windows 8 app. Right. Yeah, this is the Windows 8 app um, built into like a Windows 8 RT device yep. or, or just and Windows 8 itself. And available from the yep. Windows 8 store. Yep. So, professional presentations. You know, Link really lets you create presentations and stay in control. All of your presenters can stay in control. You can control what content is on the screen. You can control who has access to, to be heard or to speak or to present or interact with your slides. Um, and you really have to know who's in the room. You can kick people out of the room or allow them back in. You can keep people in the lobby or let them uh, interact in the presentation. And as an administrator, you're really allowed to uh, control the experience. And I'm going to dig down into that. So what do the mobile clients look like? This is the uh, new Windows mobile client in the middle of a presentation. As you see, the voice right here is, uh, or the, sorry, the video is uh, enabled in the voice. And this is what it would look like in the iOS. This is what it would look like in the Android. And this is the I, iPad client. So the whole point is, no matter what device you're on, you have no excuse not to be using Link right now. You should go get it right now, sign up, download the client, and start using Link. As a matter of fact, if you want, you can Link with me right now. So here's the demo. I'm going to flip right into my Link. And... Hopefully you guys can see on my screen. That's coming. It's coming. It's coming. While you're doing that, uh, <laughs> some, somebody asked about is there specific hardware requirements for um, for Link on premise? And yes, there there are specific hardware requirements. Our vendors such as HP, Cisco, Syngoma that all support uh, fully integrated um, uh, Link on premise. So they they all have uh, equipment now to. Uh, to integrate with a link on premise situation. So, hopefully, we're seeing my uh, my link client now. Yes. It's simple. I am Karen Berg once again. Mm -hmm. so Welcome, I Karen. A, uh, hello. So, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to find Chris. Well, first and foremost, oh, right here. <laughs> first and foremost, I, I, I see uh, Dre Brown. He he works with us, and I'm going to see if Dre's available. When I start up Link, it's a very simple to use uh, interface. Karen has a, a sales team that she can work with, and you can see her none of her sales uh, teammates are online. Happens to be this is a demo account, and that's probably a good, a good reason. Uh, there's an executive team, so you can group your contacts just like any other common uh, instant messenger right. application. S somebody asked uh, while we're on contacts. Somebody yes. asked, is there a way to uh, import all the contacts from your global address list right into Link? Um, you kind of create your own contact list within Link. So uh, a quick search when you, in the Find Someone screen up there will bring in anybody from your global address from list, from your gal, uh, as well as. Um, anyone outside that you might be looking for. So I'm going to find, I believe Krista Geller is an account. If I just start typing Krista, she's in the global address list. It appeared that we haven't done this demo in 50 days, but she would be here and, and appear. If I add her, I can add her as 
I can add it to my favorites, I can add it to a particular contact list. And you can create your own list. I can create new lists. Um, if I wanted to add a Skype user, I would simply go to new, add a contact, add a contact night of my organization, and I would select Skype, and then I would have to put their entire Skype associated email address in here. Correct. Now I'm going to add Chris, since you're not in the same organization that this demo account is. Okay. Now I'm going to simply type your uh, email address, right? Yep. So everybody's going to have my email address That's now. fine. That's I can fine. email you. And I'm going to add you to my favorites. And it says Chris Oakman is busy and do not disturb. The great thing about Link is that it carries presence. Now I'm available. Oh, so now you're available. So I want to uh, send an IM to Chris. The, the great thing about Link is presence. So if Chris goes back to do not disturb, because Chris is obviously busy. He's in, in this jump start with me now. I would be able to, oh, you can see what happens. It's going to tell me you can't send the message now. Yep. Because Chris is not available. The, the great thing about Link is that your presence, which can be set right here, I can set myself as available, busy, do not disturb, is dictated by default by my Outlook calendar. So if my Outlook calendar says that I'm in a meeting, Link says I'm busy. If my Outlook, and if I'm away from my computer for more than I believe, it's two, to, two, two, two or three minutes by default, yeah. my presence will change from available to away, or you can just physically set it to whatever you want it to be. All right. Um, you can also, uh, there are also some other features, like uh, if you're in the middle of a Power present PowerPoint presentation, it'll automatically set you to Do Not Disturb. So there are some other uh, nice integrations with other Office products as well. Um, some great things about working within Link. If I have a, com a conversation with Chris today, um, it could start as an email. So I'm going to open up my Outlook. And I don't believe that I've sent Chris an email before. So what I'm going to do is use myself as a... Uh, so here's Steve. I'm offline right now, but I could send myself an email, or an IM. You'll notice that because the thread of this email was, please set up the following users uh, on Outlook, the context of that uh, conversation is carried into this IM. Right. Because I started that there. So if I send myself a message, it'll actually, well, I can't go through because I'm offline right now. What would happen is there's a conversation history within Outlook. And all of the conversations that I've ever had, I've talked to Dre, I've talked to Matthew Calder, I've talked to uh, myself, and I've talked to a lot of people here. The conversation stays there, so we have that ability to go back and get that information. Right, and it's completely searchable through the Outlook client as well. Definitely. So when, you, when you're searching, oh, Steve and I had this conversation last week about this PowerPoint. Can't remember what the decision was. It, it was in it through Link, instant messaging. It's all saved in your conversation history, so you can always get that information. Yep. So I'm going to get back to the uh, presentation. Okay. Assuming I can do this correctly. All right. <laughs> um, uh, so somebody asked, uh, "Can it, so is there a vendor that currently offers hosted VoIP that integrates with the Link?" Um, there are some. Third there party are vendors. some third-party vendors. You can just do a search on Microsoft Pinpoint. You should be able to find them. All right. So I believe I've caught back up in the presentation. Um, yeah, back to the, uh, the actual presentation itself. So what I did not show, and I'll show it in a moment, is how to create online meetings. So yes, I showed you can use the IM, but one of the great things is the ability to create online meetings. We can have a meeting right now. I can schedule one for next week, next year, next month. I can make a recurring meeting, just like I could in, in, in Outlook. For, uh, and within my Outlook, con uh, Outlook client or within my uh, OWA client, you'll see New Link Meeting. When I select New Link Meeting, what'll pop up is the ability to create a meeting, and I can invite members to the meeting. I can Im invite attendees, just like I would any other link meeting or uh, Outlook meeting, and I can actually set the time, the date. I can make it recur for as, as frequently as I want. And you'll notice by default the join link meeting link is in the in the actual body of the uh, calendar item. Okay. Attendees can click on that. Yep. So anybody can join the meeting, whether you have link or not, which is a great thing. You could simply be a user that uses a other type of hardware. You might use an Apple or a Mac. It may not have Link. Or, right, and somebody asked, what about Link yeah. on Mac? Should Mac users link, use the link, link web app or more capabilities than Link client? Oh, there's a full, it, link, there's a full client link client for the Mac, and it comes yeah. as part of your uh, Office 365 subscription. Yeah. So if you have the ability to get the Link client, it's a more rich experience, and it's always the preferred experience, but you can always use the web client, and you can inter interact with meetings, and yep. you can uh, communicate back and forth. It's just a better experience and a more rich experience using the actual full client. Yep. So, 
how do I manage meetings? So after I create a meeting, I can simply go into meeting options, which is here, and then I get the ability to create a uh, lobby, so people have to wait in the lobby. Or I can allow people, certain persons into the meeting immediately. I have a lot of control to uh, mute attendees, so they can come into the meeting, but they can't talk to anybody else. Right. Or I can uh, block attendees from using video. Or I can tell them that they can't watch my video. So you have a lot of control. Now let's say you do not run Outlook, but you still want to use Link. How do you schedule a meeting? Mm -hmm. You can go to the Link web scheduler, which is available at httpsched.link.com. Know that URL. Yep. Um, you can create Link meetings there, and you can send in invitations with iCal or iCalendar, and you can copy and paste uh, the actual meeting information and send it to whoever you want to, right. however you want to. Okay. You, you, you can also check your, uh, your Link meetings. Yep. And you can also do Outlook Web Access now. You can... Outlook Web Access definitely does yep. the same thing. Yep. But I mean, if you only have Link, if, if you, you don't, only have if you don't have if Exchange, you don't have, if you don't have an Exchange client, yep, that's yep. how you would you would do it. Yep. And joining a Link meeting, so very simple. You'll get the actual body of the uh, in the body of the meeting that was sent to you. You'll have this information. This number is probably not live, so I wouldn't try it. But you could just click on the Join Link meeting, and it would prompt you if you do not have the Link client to uh, install the Link Web app, uh, applet or uh, not applet, uh, what is it, a uh, plugin. Plugin. Yeah, now, um, so, something to take note of, uh, to get those phone numbers, you need to, to contract with a third-party vendor yep. that offers conferencing uh, calling to, built into Link. So you can add that to your Link client. Uh, it's done in the admin console for Link. Um, you need to contract with a third-party vendor to do that. And we'll be getting to show you how to do that uh, yep. shortly. Yep. So, you know, what can you control? And if we look down here, you can control, you know, who, who's in the meeting. You know, what, what, here's the options in this chart, and I would definitely say you should know that if you're, if you're going to be uh, studying to become an admin and, and possibly uh, taking, you know, a test or something like that. Maybe you should know this chart. Um, who can you can control? You can control who can have access to uh, actually drive the meeting, who can be an attendee only, who can or can't do certain things, and this chart explains exactly who can do what. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and schedule a meeting now. So I'm going to try this again, and hopefully this uh, works a little bit smoother. I'm just waiting for it to appear on the screen. So hopefully we see my Outlook now. All right, so I'm going to go to my calendar. And you see she's really busy. So we are going to schedule a meeting on the 15th. That's a Saturday. And I am going to go to home, new link meeting. You'll see that by default the join link meeting came up. As Chris said, uh, because she's not set up to have a uh, conference bridge number, right. the conference calling information did not appear. But we are going to go ahead and invite Chris Geller and Dan Jump, our CEO, to this meeting. Um, Saturday morning meeting. And I'm going to make it at uh, 3, 3 a.m. till 6 a.m. And I'm going to go ahead and set some meeting options. I'm going to say that uh, nobody has to wait in the lobby. Actually, no, I'm going to make them all wait in the lobby. Uh, so, and who can present? I'm the only presenter. And I'm going to mute everybody and block their video. Send it out, and we're done. Yep. So I'm going to now switch back to the presentation. And hopefully we're, uh, we're seeing our PowerPoint again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so w one of the things you can also do yep. is you can mute everybody. As a, as a conference organizer, yep. you can mute everybody that, uh, that's on your call if, uh, if you're doing the speaking. And it's, it's never fun to have uh, somebody that forgot to mute their phone or their you link. You can hear the background noise. You can hear the background Just noise. Mute them. Baby crying when they're, when they're doing their conference <laughs> from home, whatever. Dogs barking. Um, you know, so uh, it, it's nice to have that ability. Uh, somebody asked uh, if there's a mobile client for BlackBerry, and I'm not sure. I haven't looked in the BlackBerry store to see if there's a mobile client yet or not. Uh, I'm not sure on that. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody asked about, let's go through a few more questions here. Um, can the Windows Phone 8 Link 2013 client participate in a shared desktop session, or is it text only? Uh, I believe it's text only, but I will double check that. So, um, let's see. We're having a few technical difficulties, so we're going to try and answer a few more questions here. Uh, let's see. 
All right, we've caught up. Okay, we're caught up. So we can good. jump right into All the right. system requirements. Great, good, good, good. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. So what are the system requirements for Link or Link Online? The client requirements, you know, what does it take to actually run this uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 with the latest service packs, or Mac OS, uh, I think 10.5.8 or later, which we'll oh. get to. Browsers, what browsers are required, Internet Explorer uh, 7 through or later, the latest Mozilla uh, Firefox browser. Other browsers do work for some limited functionality, mm -hmm. but these are the officially supported browsers. For Office integration, you need Outlook 2010 or, or Outlook 2013 for the full uh, Outlook rich experience. And the, the CPU and graphics and display resolution are all listed here. For the uh, voice and data, what, what video codecs are needed, all that's listed on this chart as well. Know this chart. It's really good to know. You don't have to know every little thing, but you can use this as a reference to know if I'm having voice or video or client problems, let me just check to make sure my system meets these, uh, these requirements. Now, what is really important are the firewall ports. Right. Yeah. Very important. Very important. For, for one, for, for knowledge, and for two, if you want Link to work. Right. If you do not have, you know, 443 or these, these ports right here listed going out, Link will not work correctly. Something will not work. You might get a piece of Link. You might not get any of it. Right. And somebody asked earlier about, uh, you know, they have some problems doing uh, Link meetings with people that don't have the Link client. And it could be because th their it could company, be on their end. they yeah. could be on their end. More than likely, it's on their end. They're blocking a, yep. a port or, or something like that on their network. Just can't so. stress enough that the firewall ports are the first place to look when you're having domain-related Link issues. When multiple right. people in one area are, are not able to work and other people can, check your firewall settings first. Make sure all of this traffic is right. able to go out and make sure you've allowed out, outgoing connections to the, to the you know, any, any alias at link.com, at outlook.com, and at microsoftonline.com. Really, really, really important. So, getting into the administration. DNS settings. So, to, to allow Link Online to work and to allow you to automatically sign in, you have to have certain uh, DNS records. This chart may be a little difficult to read, but the slides should be available. If they're not available now, they will be soon. Um, cr creating those two CNAME records, is, is ultra important to allow the SIP uh, traffic to go through and allow you to connect your client. Because a link looks for certain auto discover records and the SRV records and, and the federation uh, for federation and SIP traffic. Yep. And if those uh, DNS records are not set publicly and in some cases internally, your uh, link may not work and you'll have a poor link experience. Your users will not be able to connect. So please be sure to make sure that you change those DNS records both publicly and privately if you maintain an internal domain. Uh, back to the network re requirements, this chart is the most important chart when it comes to Link. Right. Why is it not working? So it is in here a few times for that. And there's, there's a reason that we're showing this a few times. <laughs> All right, so if you need to manually create, set up a client, what do you do? Why would you manually need to set up a client? Well, if you, if, if you're, well first of all, the, two, the previous version uh, did not support the Mac client natively. Right. So you had to do this yep. in the Mac client. But in some cases, you could have you know, uh, traffic uh, re right. re restricted. And, or uh, what we've seen in the past is auto discover settings yep. aren't correct, uh, and we couldn't get Link to, to connect. To manually override. As soon as you put the manual settings yep. in, it was fine. So, so you can usually go a in, DNS yeah. setting. Usually it is DNS, but you can go in and manually set. Some cases you don't have control over your DNS. Right. So you may have to manually set these settings, and that will certainly do it's a client by client thing, but it will allow that particular client to connect. Right. All right, a phenomenal tool, the transport or. The Transport Reliability IP Probe, or the TRIP tool. This tool is something you can run before you decide to use Link, or if you're having Link issues. It will tell you what's going on inside of your environment, what's going on with your network, does your network support the uh, ability to use Link. Do you have enough bandwidth? Do you have enough bandwidth? You know, right. um, is the, uh, are the ports open? So you can simply go to this URL, select one of the uh, sites, and run this test versus the environment you're in, and it will let you know ahead of time, hey, my environment is good to go for Link or I need to troubleshoot a few things. Yep. That tool is great and definitely know where it is, what it can do, and how to use it. So, let's configure Link Online. What does it look like within the uh, context of the Outlook, uh, or sorry, the Office 365 Admin Center? Um, I'm gonna actually jump really into the Office 365 Center, so we're gonna do this live. Okay. I'm going to try this one more time, and hopefully we'll be able to, uh, you can answer a couple of questions while I get this set up. Sure. Sure. So um, somebody's asked, you know, how do I explain, you know, making firewall settings to somebody who just wants to join a meeting? And one, one of the things, um, if, if it's a home user, if it's uh, uh, somebody you've just invited, 
it's not typically a problem. It's typically a problem in an enterprise network where they have locked down connectivity to the internet. Uh, they've blocked a bunch of ports. It's uh, typically those ports are are generally open for most most uh, basic firewalls allow all outgoing traffic. So um, you know it's not typically an issue. It's usually an issue in a in an enterprise environment. So so here we are at the uh, actual Office 365 admin center. So first and foremost, if I wanted to check on a user to be able to use Link, I have to make sure they have a Link license. Right. We went to this. We went through this in the licensing or in the user admin section, but we're going to recover it again now. So we'll look at Ali. We'll pick on Ali. Ali today. Ali today. Well, we can go back to Amy. So Ali does have a Link Online, a checkbox next to Link Online, meaning she has the service enabled first and yep. foremost. So that's great. I'll press cancel here. Now I want to actually drill down into the Link administration. Under Admin, you hit the drop down and you select Link here. And now what do you know? I'm in the Link Admin Center. From here, I'll see all of my Link-enabled users. I can see uh, the organization settings, the dial-in conferencing settings, which go back to selecting a provider and being able to use uh, call bridges, and my overall meeting invitations, where I can customize how our meeting invitations come out and some of the information. Right, you can add out. you can add your company logo. You can add your help, your support site. You can add um, a legal URL that that hey, I'll 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 conferences are recorded, you know, something yep. like that. Uh, and then, of course, just a, some notes in there as well. Just you know, your branding and support. So, yep. and it's, so we're going to, in this case, pick on Ali since we're going to choose Ali. We want to know what we can do with Ali. If I simply select Ali here, it'll give me a preview on the right uh, panel, you know, what's going on. She has uh, audio video enabled, HD audio at that. She can record. She can anonymously dial out, and she can transfer files and share notes with people. She can also talk to external uh, contacts. And if we want to go in and change those settings for some reason, we can select edit. And here it is right here. I can select what she can and cannot do. So I can say she has no audio, no, no audio and video capabilities. Or I can give her audio only, audio and video, or audio and HD video. And why would you want to use HD video over regular video, or why would you not? Well, if, if your bandwidth is limited, you might want to do a standard definition video yep. instead of high high definition video. And, and um, depending on how many users, bandwidth could be a consideration. It could be a, if you've got a conference of fifty internal uh, users, you might want to might want to consider limiting everyone to standard video. And that's something that we actually see um, among businesses. Well, yep. I have too many people, and my bandwidth was choppy. The, the calls came in; people were, they, they didn't get a good video experience. Right. It's probably because they were using more bandwidth than was available. Right. Um, you can allow them to record conversations, allow anonymous conversations, and you know you can turn on archived features for compliance sake. Yep. External communications. This is where you can say no. She can't talk with anybody outside. Or right. She can talk only with Link users, or she can talk with Link plus external users such as Skype or um, other external users if you're federated. So somebody asked earlier about. Uh, uh you know how hard this was to do. I don't want to have to enable federation. This is this is <laughs> this not is like as hard exchange. as it is. Uh, this, this is, is as hard as it is. It's a checkbox to allow communication with external yeah. organizations. And this is for a particular user. This, right. We're getting ready to get in. And then dialing conferencing. If if there's a provider, if she has one of these, you all are signed up with one of these providers, and you've been given conference call information. You can assign a, a toll number, toll free number, and a passcode to that particular user. So their right. bridge will be sent out when they create invitations. You can do that on a per user basis. Or you can do it for all of your users, right? And you can you can also uh, the the conferencing provider will will if you're adding this for 50 users, 100 users, your conferencing provider will provide you with a spreadsheet or an, which uh, you can import, which you can import a CSV right file. In. Yep. So I'll be showing that in a moment. So we we looked at the users, what we can do with the users organizationally. What can we do? Let's go to answer that question right now. Yep. I want to turn on uh, external communication, so it could be turned off right now. They wouldn't be able to talk with anybody outside. Right. If I want to say, let's turn on for everybody except for domains that I block, that's what I've done now. I've also now enabled, by checking this box, communication with Skype and other uh, public IM services. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's a domain-wide setting. I can go in and change that per user. Now, if I just want to block somebody, like I don't want my, communi my users communicating with anybody at Microsoft.com, I simply add Microsoft.com here. If I don't want anybody on this to communicate with DistrictComputers.com users, so now we can talk to everybody except for users from these two domains. Right. 
Or you can allow specific domains, or, so you don't allow, you don't want everybody on Skype to be able to yeah. talk to you. Uh, you can just allow specific users, specific domains. Which we're showing now. Now I'm saying or we're domains. only going to allow you to talk to certain domains. So now people, our users can only talk to people outside from district computers or Microsoft. All right. Just with the change of those three. So that's, that's all the configuration there is into external communications. Very simple, very easy, similar user interface to everything else in Office 365. Yeah. Um, do I want to show my presence to you know internal users and external users? That's set right here. Uh, do we want to allow the push notification service or the Apple push notification service for uh, mobile devices? This has to do with the mobile client connectivity. Dial-in conferencing. This goes back to what Chris was just saying. If we have a 10 users that have different, uh, different numbers and conference bridge calls, I would get an ISV file. It would have the username, the number, the configuration code, and I would import that, and it would automatically apply the settings for each individual user. So now we're going to attempt to get back to the slide deck. So Chris is going to answer a few questions. Sure. Um, I'm answering one right now. Somebody asked, how do I enable corporate link account to connect to a Skype user? First of all, if your corporate, link, if your corporate um, Office 365 tenant has not been upgraded yet to the newest version of the tenant, you will not have that capability. Uh, once you're upgraded, then it's just a matter of uh, checking the box for external communications. Okay. If you can get one more. Uh, I can. Um, uh, somebody asked, is there a way to add additional providers to the list of approved providers for um, the conference bridge? As they become available. As they become available, yeah. They have to be approved by Microsoft in order to be on that list. And, and actually, I think I saw on the right side of that, there are three now. But on yeah. the right side of that screen where you uh, set up the external um, or the call bridging, there's actually, a, it says, find providers. Right. So you can check that link, and, and as providers become approved, they should appear in the portal. So we can go back now to the actual uh, debt. So we've assigning a license. Now, how do we get the client? I didn't show that. Inside of the portal, there's a software download section. Mm -hmm. If you have a link at all, well, it could be a standalone link plan, it could be part of all, uh, any, uh, any plan that includes a link, you have the ability to download the link client. Right. And link is also included as part of Office 365 or Office Professional Plus. So the current version. It, the current version, 2013 version, it is included as a client just like Excel and Word and PowerPoint in the, yep. the uh, bundle. So, But if you have a Mac, you still have to download, have to download the download, uh, Link right. 2011 client for Mac Office 2011. Right. Or if you just bought an E1 yep. plan, uh, which didn't include Office uh, Professional you Plus, you link. can download just a Link. And you do not have to have the remainder of Office to run Link. Link can run as a standalone app yep. or application. And then the mobile clients, you can download those from the mobile marketplaces. Correct. So we're going to actually, we've already gone through the demo. Um, we're going to actually talk about what are the federation types. Mm -hmm. So you can federate with any other Link Online user as long as you enabled the federation, which are enabled the uh, external communication, or you can get full IM and you can get uh, Link to Link audio and video. The same goes with Link on-premise servers, Link 2010. It should say 2013 there also. Um, sorry about that. I'll update that slide. Okay. But Link uh, two, uh, 2010 and 2013, and uh, some of the OCS is still supported for IM, I believe. I'm not yeah. sure about full voice and video. Then there's Skype, um, which is new, and you get the full voice and video, IM, and presence. What are the choices? We already went through the choices for public IM, the domain federation, and... Uh, Configuring the dial-in conferencing. I, I, I clicked through it, and right now the th there are three providers. We just talked about that, mm -hmm. but there will be probably more to come. And what are you able to do? You're able to set a dial-in number, a, a toll-free dial-in number, as well as a PIN code for people to join your, right. join your meeting. And obviously there's a, a cost per minute for that, just like any other conferencing solution. Yep. And right here, yeah. these are just the slides. that. So if you download the slides and you want to know, hey, you, know, you, you guys click through that really, really quickly, I actually, we actually broke down step by step what it looks like when you do each, each step yep. within here. So if you look in this slide right here on the right side where it says related, find a provider, that will take you to the actual current, uh, current list of the providers that are available. So you can always check there within the portal and get that to answer that question. Are there any questions while we're flowing through? Um, let's see, somebody, somebody posted that they uh, do, uh, they've, they've developed a custom script to automatically populate the contact group templates. So, um, you know, I guess those, those features are available if, uh, if that's something you need. If you're, uh, you know, a large organization and you want to populate a lot of contacts into your yep. link, link user. So there are some ways to do that. Um, uh, somebody asked... Get to the questions portal. Can we elaborate 
what pieces are missing in Link, on, Link Online compared to Link 2013 on-premise? The, the, the major big, ones was two of them that are major. Yeah. The, the E911. Right. And the full voice. Right. The, the, and the, the, emergency 911 uh, yeah. in the, here in the States and um, uh, full voice uh, communication. So the ability to have a phone on your on your desk that integrates to yeah. Link itself. So uh, full PBX features. And the actual Link, phone Link client itself can log in to the right. enterprise server, whereas you have to have a USB type phone if you're right. just going to use the Link online. And if you haven't seen some of these new phones, uh, there's a bunch of them out there that uh, some you really actually, awesome phones. Yeah, <laughs> really, really neat phones that uh, basically have the Link client completely built into the phone. Yeah. They they run a, a version of Windows CE and uh, have the Link client built into the phone. So yep. at, at that point, cool. you don't even need a, a computer. It can be a, in a conference just room or just a phone, and it can handles all your presence and, and everything that you the need. The big thing, and, and I did not put it in the deck, or we didn't talk about it, is that you, you mentioned it. You must have the E4 plan to right. use the enterprise voice. So you have the online service for, uh, for 365, yep. the E4 plan, and then you have an on-premise server to handle that enterprise voice, but you must have the uh, the E4 plan. The, uh, and, the, and the E4 plan gives you the yeah. licensing for uh, on the on-premise server, so uh, you can download a, a full version of Link. You get the, yep. the license key just like uh, just like an exchange. Yep. Yep. So um, let's see. Let's take a look at some more questions. Yep. Uh, is Link to Phone available in Office 365? We just kind of answered that. So. You know, so, and I will drill down a little more yeah. on that. So, first of all, enterprise voice is something that may be coming. You know, may be coming, it may not be, but is Link to Phone natively available? No. You have to get a third party uh, appliance or server to extend that functionality, and then you can make calls. It can be hosted, though. So, you can find people that are persons or partners that will host a, a Link uh, enterprise server for you. Mm -hmm. And that will integrate directly to your Link Online service, and you can, you know, make phone calls just like as if you had a, a full Link to Phone deployment. So I don't have that information um, available with Where, but you can go online and look that up. I'm sure. Yep. Uh, somebody asked if you use a conference provider, will the audio portion of a Link meeting be recorded with the video? And the answer is yes. Yes. Yep. It will well, you have to configure that. You have to you set have it to up. But yes. Yep. It's, it's able to do so. Yep. Um, t -t 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 let's see. We can jump to the resources there. Yeah. So we basically have the resources available, and like I said, this is in the slide deck. The actual service description itself will give you some more granular information. The, the, uh, the network requirements, which we covered two or three times, are in there. And that trip tool. Know the trip tool. Know how to use it. It, it will probably save you a lot of time if you run into some troubleshooting right. or having to call support. You can run that tool. and It's not a mandatory thing, but it's a, a best practices thing. Um, all about federation and, and what, what's supported now. Are the, are the other external or third-party uh, IM clients going to federate? Anything about that will be listed there. So as those change, just check that link. And more about the link clients. What can I do with what client? What are my capabilities? That link right there will tell you everything about all the clients, what works, what doesn't work, what, what's required to run what client. Um, great resources. Right. And it looks like uh, Matt has uh, put links in the Q&A to Excellent. client system requirements, uh, link client video requirements, and how to set up your link network for, or Excellent. your network for link online. So thanks so for that, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Um, Any more questions coming through? Uh, that's it. Uh, please, uh, if you could, please take a, take, take a moment to answer the poll, yep. and we will be back in about 10 minutes or so. Thank you very much. Thanks.